Hey gang, Tony here. Um, out at the flea market with my brother Mike. So we figured that Hi. we would do. Yeah, flip it around. Flip it around, Mike. There he is. Oh no. Oh god. We figured we'd take a little bit of video of the flea market here. We just arrived. We haven't actually walked around at all, but we'll take a little video as we walk around maybe. And uh, hopefully we'll find something good. Talk to you in a few. Hey gang, Tony here. I am going to show you some quick stuff. Um, there's going to be some kind of introduction before this, but I can't remember what I said. My brother filmed it. Uh, we decided on Saturday to go to the flea market rather than yard sales. This was his idea. Uh, I generally am okay with the flea market. As you can see, I remember he took a panning shot, so maybe I'll overlay now. As you can see, as he pans across, there are quite a few booths, and going to the flea market sometimes can feel like you're hitting 50 yard sales all at the same time, which is pretty cool. Hey there, little Tony. How are you at the bottom of the hill? I'm okay. Cheers. I do enjoy going because there's just the sheer amount of stuff that you could see all within the same uh, area. But I mean, when you get right down right uh, right down to it, these are the people, the people who are selling at the at the flea market. These are the other people who are usually out at the yard sales and the auctions and the estate sales, getting the stuff at the prices that I want to get it. And then they have to pay for these booths at the flea market. So not only do they want to make money on their investment anyway, but now they also have to hike it up even a little more so that they could pay for their booths. And what you're looking at are slightly inflated prices, generally speaking. Now you can find some stuff sometimes, and I did actually get a few things. All little stuff, nothing crazy, nothing great, but uh, not a bad little, you know, haul for my yard sale uh, finds on, on Saturday. So. Uh, the f one thing I got, I don't actually have with me because I gave to my dad since he kind of collects trains, uh, was a tin, it was like this big, it was a tin train with a battery compartment, uh, made in 1969 in Japan, uh, which when you put the batteries in it clangs and makes whistling sounds and wheels move and it kind of goes around. It was pretty cool, uh, and he only wanted a buck for it. It's pretty, in pretty rough condition, some rust and a missing piece or two. But for a buck, it was kind of a cool find. Gave it to my dad for his train room, and uh, that was that. So, next up, I uh, got a couple of movies because they're sell. You know, that's one good thing I guess at the flea market is if you want DVDs or Blu-rays, you could usually get them for like a buck. Sometimes a little less, sometimes a little more. These were a dollar each. I got Boris Karlov's The Veil. Uh, it's five spine-tingling episodes. What's behind the hidden veil? Uh, oh, what's hidden behind the veil? I'm sorry, I can't read. I can't read. And there's commercials on Spotify again, so it's just freaking with my head, and I can't concentrate. Freaking Spotify can't just play a song. All right. So this is um, interesting. I've actually never seen this. Uh, never even heard of it. The veil. But I saw Boris Karloff on there, and I said, hey, for a buck, something to watch, check it out, five episodes. And then the other DVD I got is a, a twofer, it's a double feature, People Under the Stairs and Shocker. People Under the Stairs and the Shocker, I, and Shocker, I actually haven't seen either of these in a really, really long time, but I remember loving the People Under the Stairs, and... I feel like I saw I saw Shocker when I was younger, and I still lived in Brooklyn, so I had to be, you know, preteen at the time. And um, again, it was just one of those movies that I kind of remember loving, but it's been so long I, I have no idea if it sucks or not. Um, it's actually two discs, not it's not only on one disc, so I kind of like that. I think that's pretty neat. And again, it was a buck, so got a couple of DVDs. Uh, they had some other stuff that might have been worthwhile, but I, I ended up trying to keep my spending pretty low. Um, I also got, for 50 cents each, a couple of magazines. One is Mad Magazine Presents the Ultimate Horror Movie. Now, obviously I got it because of the horror thing, although when I was younger I did buy Mad Magazine. I used to kind of love these. Um, reading through it now, it just seems really corny and not very funny, but when I was a kid I used to love Mad Magazine. So, um, yeah, that one is from 1981. Unfortunately, this particular one, this issue, 
I thought it was like a, a horror issue, but unfortunately, it really is just one of the segments is the horror movie, and then the rest is just regular crap. So, still kind of cool just for the cover, 50 cents. And then the other 50 cent magazine I got was Cracked, Collector's Edition Monsters. Um, this one is a whole issue of all monster stuff, which is pretty neat. And it's, um, it's a mostly universal monster stuff too, which is cool. Again, pretty corny stuff, but I used to buy crack magazines sometimes too, and um, it's, it's fun, you know? I don't expect, you know, I didn't buy these because I'm going to try to sell them. I just bought them for reading, you know? When I go to the bathroom, I got something to read, you know what I'm saying? Alright, so, a couple of magazines for a buck altogether. Not too bad. Now the last, this is the last thing I got, I believe, yeah. The last thing I got is actually a little bit of a retribution from an earlier yard sale this year. If you've been watching my yard sale find videos, you will know what I was talking about. But, I got... ALF! Unfortunately, it's not the talking ALF doll. If you remember from the earlier yard sale finds video, she had a talking ALF doll. I can't remember exactly what she wanted for it, but I feel like it was 50 or $60. It was something ridiculous, that, and I, I, I passed on it. So, uh, one of the yard sale guys there had the, or flea market guys had the uh, big ALF doll, not talking, but I don't think it's a talking one. I don't know where you would do it if it was. No, I'm pretty sure it's not. Um, so, we got that, and he actually also had one of those ALF hand puppets, which, um, it's a little ratty, but, you know, kind of, kind of figured I might as well get both of them. Uh, he wanted, he wanted something like $10, but then he talked himself down to 6 If you don't know what I mean, that means he goes, well, I was going to ask $10 for the both of them, but, uh, if you want him, I could give you 6 So he did it the old talk myself down routine. And then um, I offered five. So I got these guys for five. Again, you know, kind of a, just a nostalgia thing. I'll probably, you'll probably end up seeing Alf sitting behind me during future videos. I'm not going to try to sell that thing or, you know, I doubt it's worth very much. It's probably only worth about five dollars, maybe a little more. But I got my Alf dolls. I know, I know. I have a problem. I understand this. I understand there is something wrong with me. I'm sorry. Okay, um, I'm sorry, I'm a little, I, you, if you could tell, I'm not really that energized right now. I had a late night yesterday. My friend Todd Kiesling, a uh, fellow writer, came to town first uh, time that we ever really got to hang out in person. Uh, and his wife, Erica, also came, got my brother and his wife to come. We went to see Ghostbusters in the theater and went out for some food and drink. And uh, it was an early day because of the flea market, so, you know, I'm a little beat today and it got hot and it's humid and I'm just, oh, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm not very energized, so I apologize for that. And, um, yeah, I think that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> that's about it. I need to go get some coffee. I'll catch you guys next time. Uh, yeah, alright, I gotta go. <laughs> See you guys. Okay, yeah, I was <laughs> so I'm so out of it. I totally forgot something that I else that I got. Um, it's this Star Wars Darth Vader video game controller. It's um, see if that I don't know if I'm gonna get that to focus, but it's a it's a TV game thing. So you basically hook it directly into the TV rather than into a console. And I haven't tried it yet, I don't know if it works, I don't know what the games are like, but I got that for a buck, so I figured I would play around with it. it seemed kind of neat. I don't think they're worth anything, but, you know, just for my own fun. <laughs> Alright, so that was the last thing.